Well, you guys got another video here for you on how to install any operating system over the network. We're going to be using a tool which you can uh, install uh, Windows 10 over the network. I'll quickly show you how to set this up. Very simple and easy to do. Now, this is just one of the ways of going about doing this. And there's quite a few different ways, but this is one of them. And I'll show you how to do it. So first, let's go to disk management by right clicking on the start button here and opening up disk management. So what we're going to do here, once we've got disk management open, is we need to create a partition, uh, roughly around about 15 gigs will do. So I'm going to use my C drive here. I've got some space available. So what I'm going to do is just quickly take a look here, make sure I've got enough space. There we go. We've got plenty of space here. So I'm going to take about 15 gigs of the C drive and make a new partition. So let me just uh, right click on the C drive here. And what we can do is shrink the volume just let that load up it'll take a few seconds to uh, load up and then we'll be able to put in our number of size that we want to shrink it to so we're going to just put 15,000 uh, in here you can be more accurate if you wish but that will do and we can just click on shrink and this will shrink the volume down by 15 gigabytes or thereabouts so there we have a unallocated space so we need to create a new simple volume by right clicking on this unallocated space and go new simple volume. And we can go through the motions here by going next, use all of the space and then go next and next again, give it a drive letter. If you want whatever drive letter you like um, up the top, you can see assign a drive letter here. If you want to give it a different drive letter, like Z X, whatever you want to do, and then give it a name. And this name can be whatever you like. So I'm just going to call this network space pxe and we'll just do space boot here and we can now go next and this will format the drive quickly and create that drive with the drive letter on it and also the title that we give it so that's now done we should have that already set up for us now ready to go so let me just close off the disk management we don't need that anymore so let me just open this up and I've already got a drive letter called uh, Z here, so Z. So I need to change that quickly uh, to another letter. I didn't realize my my home cloud was using drive Z. So I'll quickly go back into uh, disk management here and change the drive letter. It's very simple and easy to do. So if you ever want to change your drive letter, this is how you do it. Very simple. Just right click on here and change drive letter and paths. There you go. And we can change it. And so I'm going to quickly change this and give it a new drive letter. Just give it something like X or something like that. And then click OK and then click Yes. And that should now be changed. There we go. So it should be visible now. Now we've changed the drive letter. So now we've got that done, we can close off uh, the disk management tool. And uh, we're going to take a quick look here at uh, the space that we've got here. So there it is right there. And it's around about 15 gigabytes. So what we need to do now is get some files to put in there and we want to use the all-in-one boot. This is an all-in-one boot software, multi-boot USB creator software. It's free to download. You can download it here. And uh, once you've got this downloaded, so we need the all-in-one boot extractor. So that's what we're going to do here and use this software. There's quite a few places to download this, um, but I'm just going to go to the closest place I can find it and then download this which is Google Drive. You should see it here. And then all you need to do is hit download and it should download the file to your computer. Now, once we've got this done, we can uh, get our version of Windows, which we want to use. In this case, I'm going to be using Windows 10, but you can use Linux or whatever version of operating system you want to install across the network. So let's go ahead and go to Microsoft's website and download the media creation tool and obviously this will allow us to get our ISO image that we're going to need to install. So we've opened up media creation tool here. You should say getting a few things ready. Just let it do its thing. It takes a few minutes. And then once you've done that, you can go through the motions and get this um, ISO. So I'm going to let that do its thing here and move on to the next section, which will be the license agreement. So just click on this. Again, it's going to go through a few more things here. And now we can create 
installation media, USB flash drive, or ISO. This is where you can select your language and architecture and the edition that you want to use. I'm going to take the tick out of use the recommended settings and select ISO and click next. And that will download the ISO for you. I've already got the ISO, but I'm just going to show you basically how to do it just in case you didn't know. So now we've got those files, you can see they've downloaded into my download section here. I've got the all-in-one boot extractor and I've also got the Windows ISO. And uh, once we've got those, I'm going to copy and paste these into uh, my partition that we created earlier on. So let's quickly put those files into this partition, which is our network PX uh, boot. I'm going to copy those files over. Okay, so they're in there now. So what we need to do is get this set up ready for our Pixie Boot server so, so we can basically install these. So I'm just going to rename this file so it recognizes this file. This program is a bit choosy on what titles you use for your ISOs. So I'm just going to use this one here. I'm going to right click on the extractor and go run as administrator. You'll get this box popping up. Now, because it's an unknown publisher, you're going to get this Windows protection. Just run it anyway. And now you'll see the AIO uh, boot extractor language, and you need to change this to English. Once we change the language, we should be able to see more clearly. All I need to do now is select the drive to extract the files on. Now, of course, we want to extract these onto our little partition that we created. So let me just quickly select those. And I'm going to leave the tick inside auto install bootloader and we can now click on OK and that will install the files into that location. You'll see them populate on the screen above. There we go. And they're now installed. Now you might see this message here secure boot is on and that's because it's enabled inside the BIOS and you will need to turn that off for this to function properly. But that's OK. We can do that a little bit later on. So you will need to go into BIOS and disable that feature. So I'm going to click OK here. And what we've got here now is this little file here. And what we need to do is set this up so we've got this working properly. So go to uh, the integration tab here. You should see integration and select the pack. In this case, we want to do Windows, but there's some other things inside here if that interests you. But we're going to go Windows and we're going to select our Windows 7, 8.1 and 10 server setup. So select that. And we've got the select file. Now, if you don't have it, you can download it by hitting the download button. But I've got the ISO image, which we already downloaded. So I'm going to select this ISO here. And you can see that it's in my uh, partition, which we created earlier on. So I'm going to select this and click open. Once that's done, we can then click on OK to... Uh, start this process off. You will see image disk is not installed. Do you want to install image disk? I'm going to say yes. And now we can enter a name for our menu. Now this is for our menu system. When we boot, you can call this whatever you like. Uh, you can call it uh, Windows 10 network install or whatever you want to call yours. I've got a bunch of these different ones. So you can call this whatever you like. Windows 10 install network and PEX if you want to, or you can call it network boot, whatever you like. So I'm just going to call it this for now. And what we'll do is click OK. And that will set that in stone. So that is our menu. And you'll see it start doing all the files. And it's going to copy the Windows 10 ISO to the proper directory. And it will say done, happy booting. And that's it. That's all created. But we will need to do one more thing, which is to do with the shares of the drive. So we will need to create a share for that so it can actually share the files across the network. So let me show you how we're going to do that. So let's just go back here to our network PXE boot partition. And we're going to go to properties on there. And you should now see the sharing tab. So go to sharing. And you can see it's not shared at the moment. So go to advanced sharing here and share this folder. And we've got the drive letter here, which is the share name, which is X. Go to permissions, and we want to give full control for everyone for that uh, 
uh, the actual drive there. So just go like apply and OK, and we should be good to go there. Click OK again, and that's now done. So you should see a little share icon appear there. That means it's ready to use. And now we've got this shared. So when it gets requested to share files, it will share those files on that partition there or on that drive there. So let's go ahead and go to network and internet inside the settings panel because we need to make sure that the network and share center is set up correctly. So let's go over to the settings here and make sure that we are allowing discovery and also to share files. So you can see here, turn on network discovery that is already on because I'm sharing already and also share on file and share and print and also turn on network discovery here for guests and public and you also got a file on printer sharing you want to turn that on as well and again you might want to turn off your password I don't use the password on my personal network internal network I just have that disabled but if you want to have that on you can do you may run into some issues then you may need to set that up so the rule of thumb here is just make sure that you've got everything turned on here to share folders and drives and also files across your network. And uh, I disable the password, as you can see there. So let's move on to the next stage. So that's all now set up, ready to go. So what we're going to do next is quickly disable secure boot in the BIOS. Now you can get to your BIOS the way you get to your BIOS and then go into there and navigate to boot and what you need to do here is make sure that you've got this set to secure boot disabled as you can see on the screen here once that's done you should be okay and uh, if you're copying this across the network to another computer then obviously you will need to make sure that you are uh, booting with the uh, pixie boot there so let me go ahead and right click on the all-in-one creator here and once you should see the tiny PXE server, you should see it now started and it's now running. So that's now running. You will need to leave that running while you're copying files across the network. So don't ever close that off because you'll lose the ability to uh, share files and also install operating systems. So you should see here in your network path here, this is your network path for your share. So remember that. And copy and paste that to a notepad because that's the one you're going to need to share the installation across the network okay so let's set up vmware so we can install windows 10 via the network and you can also do this across the network to see another computer a real live computer if you want to you will need to go into the bios and make sure secure boots off on that machine and also make sure that the pixie boot is set up right on there in the bios as well I'm just going to go through the motions here and set this up. We don't need a, a Windows 10 drive or I'm going to leave this as BIOS here. Give it a couple of processors and also some cores and give it a bit more memory here. And we can go through here, go next. I'm going to use bridge here, the bridge networking. Go next and next again. And we leave that as recommended. And we can now create a new virtual disk and you leave that at 60 if you want or give it more. This is only a test purpose here. And now we can click finish. Okay, so let's now make sure our service is running. It is, it's running. As you can see here, if it's not running, then start your service and then basically click start on your virtual machine. You should see it starting to load up here now, finding the MAC address and also finding the IP. And it's now connecting to it and it's starting to talk to that uh, virtual machine so once i click this off you should now see the WinPE and also setup and that is it right here you can see it's showing the splash screen here it's now connected and once you click on the next stage when you push enter here this will give you your setup that you've set here which is your windows 10 network pxe and let that load in and this will now start talking to that partition on that computer. So you should now see it loading up. There we go. Start to load up. Just let that do its thing. And uh, once you get to this stage, you'll get a purple screen, which you're familiar with. And it's asking for your network path, which is the network path we talked about earlier on. 
which is on your network share here. So you just need to go to properties and now you can go sharing and you should now see the network path here. You can copy and paste this into that window there. Now, if you can't copy and paste it, then you will need to put it into notepad and then copy and paste it. If not, you're just going to have to type it out. It's that simple. So once you've got this done and type this out, it should ask you for your username and password for the machine. So we're just going to let this do its thing, type this out. Now this drive letter here did change because I did it twice. Once was J and once was X. So make sure you got the right drive letter. You should now see enter the username for the desktop machine, which is the one that we have got our drive on. And I'm just going to put in it's me because that's my username on this machine and we would need to put in our password for that machine. There is no password on here, so I'm going to push enter. And that will then talk to the machine here. Let's go back here and take a look. We should now see the installation. Now, of course, you could have unattended installs set up here where it would just install. But that video is out of the scope of this tutorial. And I think that's going to be about it. You can see it's now starting to install. So I hope this one's been useful to you. A big thank you to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. My name has been Brian from BrightechComputers.co.uk. Bye for now.